Firebox Freestyle Stove is an advanced framework which provides the ultimate versatility in stoving functionality. It just wants to fall apart. What a beauty. Welcome to the Firebox Freestyle Tips and Tricks instructional video. First off, I keep my fire grate in the position that it needs to go in to fit in the bottom of the freestyle. The freestyle is comprised of two shorter panels and two longer panels. And uh, the fire grate also has two long sides and two short sides. The way I locate which direction the stove is actually rotated is I always work from the side that has the wind damper. I hold that, it gives me a handle, and it also tells me which direction the stove is aiming. It makes it easier when you put your fire grate in to go straight down the back, right down next to panel number four, go all the way till it touches the fire sticks, and then push it forward. Slide that right down the back, pop it into place. And then we just put that, see how I just brought that straight over? So it is still in that correct position. Put the ranger band on it. And then next time I get this out, it'll be ready to go. The triangle torch is easy to remember because a triangle has three sides. You also need to remove panel number three. So I'll go ahead and pull out the two pins that hold panel number three in lift it out of its place and then connect panel 2 to panel 4. Then we have our triangle. I'm going to switch from two four panel stoves into one six panel stove. You want to take off the number one panel off of each stove. Remove that number one panel, then you flip one stove over on top of the other, and then you reinsert two of the pins. Then you have a six panel stove. All you need to do is put some fire sticks across on both ends and you can drop the two-in-one fire grate down in. If you want to do the hexagon, you don't need to move the fire stick position and you just put the hexagon fire grate down in and you're all set. Now the cool thing about these positions is they will both work in a single fire pan. So you rotate your feet inward And then that fits. And then if you want to do it as the Bushcraft six panel, then it fits across here just like this. The other nice thing about the six panel setups is that it folds flat into a single stack and it fits inside of a fire tin. Remember when you're folding your stove, always fold panel three to touch panel four That'll help you get started, then the rest will kind of just fall into place. But you can see this will fit into the fire tin, you know, very easily. When you're going from six panels back to four panels, you need to remove the center pin. So you can kind of see how there's three pins there. You want to remove the center. And it's the same thing when you're converting from the eight panel to the four panel. You remove the center. See now this one's a little tricky because this, uh, these legs aren't lined up so if you line them up it's a little easier to tell and then you go ahead and pull the center one out. And then the stoves will come apart and then you need to put the number one panel back on. and put your legs back in. 
Let's go from two separate stoves to a single eight panel stove. I'll go ahead and aim those towards you. And remove the hinge pin from the right hand side of panel number one on both stoves. You go ahead and open the stove up on both of them and then you put one on top of the other and then those go together I usually find it's easier to turn it over to get this other pin in and then once again I like to use these wind dampers as handles they just make it easy you can go ahead and open that up put fire sticks in across in a few places just so it's well supported the two-in-one fire grate gets hinged open and then that goes the distance just like that and that needs two fire pan tins to get full coverage and that's how you would use the fire pan tins to accommodate the eight panel bushcraft setup. These fire sticks have a little notch on them and what these do is they hold your panels in position and then push it all the way in until that notch engages down here on the bottom. That keeps these panels from spreading apart. Let's go ahead and start putting it into its octagon position. You want to push the fire stick all the way in so that the corner of the fire stick can go through the hole. Okay, so then you kind of keep that straightened out so it'll stay like that. And then you go to the next position. And once again, you push it all the way through and then straighten it out with the corner of that fire stick through that hole. Then you go to the next spot. You go every other panel, you cross a panel. Go through there, then straighten it out. And then when you get to this last one, there shouldn't be as much of a bind on it, and it should be easier to get in. Push it in, go all the way in. And by going all the way in, that relieves some of the spring pressure on the octagon so that it's not held into the octagon shape but you can easily put the fire grate in and that will hold it into that octagon shape that gives you fire pan coverage for the octagon fire pit panel number three towards panel number four once you do that it just kind of falls into place now once again you're removing the center pins. In this situation we're talking about here. So the center two pins come out and then it just comes into two stoves. Put these pins back in. These space saver sized cups are a perfect companion for the firebox freestyle. They are a perfect fit to go down into the stove just a little bit. So if you have a windy day and you're trying to uh, heat up some water, you can drop your cup down into the stove closer to the hot coals or closer to a alcohol burner or whatever other heat source you may be using. We've had Tokes make a special cup for us that they had previously discontinued. And this is the cup with these up high butterfly handles. You can orient your handles the same direction as your wind damper and that allows you to go really low down into the stove right next to the hot coals. You can also support a stainless steel water bottle with this inner set of holes. This is my personal kit. This is the kit I've done all the testing with. Let me show you how I have it packed. I've got the long fire sticks on this side, and I've got a 
long handled pot lifter that fits in this side. Now I don't have the locking fire sticks but they will fit just right back in here or in here with these fire sticks. So I have both of the firebox freestyles in here. There I got it. So I have both of my freestyle stoves and then I have all the fire grates in this front pocket. So I've got the octagon, the hexagon, I've got the two-in-one fire grate and then I've got the big square grill. Toke's Siphon Jet Alcohol Burner. I like the headspace that the lower row of holes provides. Let me show you how they go in. You slide those across and you do two of them and that basically uh, gives you a little support right in the center of the triangle. And then you slide the Siphon Jet down in there like that. The Trangia alcohol burner and the Firebox Freestyle are a perfect match for each other. If you put this in the second position down, it creates the perfect one inch head space that you're always trying to achieve with the Trangia alcohol burner. It also gives you full function use of the simmer ring because it overhangs the wind damper. It gives you access to get a hold of your simmer ring when it's hot. You don't need to have the fire grate in position to hold your stove open. Once you get your fire sticks through and you put the Trangia in position, there is enough spring tension against the sides of the fire sticks that it holds your freestyle in its open position. That frees up your fire sticks so that you can support a small cup or a small pot. To use the Trangia gas burner attachment, run the mounting pins through the second hole down through panel number four into panel number two. That's the outside row of holes. Then you need to orient your burner so that the hose is aiming in the opposite direction that you plan on having it exit the stove. Now the reason you do that is so that the hose will coil as it goes down and that will prevent the hose from lifting the gas burner once it's in its position. So you always want to lead with the knob. Once you get the knob through the side feed port then gently twist the valve and it will find its way through. You run it down and then clip it onto the mounting pins just pull the hose through just a little bit, that'll relieve some of the spring tension and you're ready to get cooking. Let's put the Trangia gas burner in the hexagon fire pit. We'll run these long sticks through that second hole down. And then you wanna run your hose between the sticks and out the back feed port. You run the knob through first and then gently twist. It'll find its way through. Then as you clip this into place, hold the pins all the way in because they're just barely long enough. Once you get everything set, then you can let go of the pins and they'll stay in place. You can burn Esbit tablets one of two ways. I recommend using the Trangia gel burner in the highest outside position. This puts the Esbit tablet fairly close to the bottom of your pot which will slow down the burn and make it last longer. You can also support a chunk chicken can on the fire grate. You would want to put the fire grate in that third hole down, once again keeping that Esbit fuel tablet close to the bottom of your pot so that it will burn more efficiently. The fire grate serves two functions. It both supports things that are in the burn chamber, but it also holds your stove in its open position. Its height can be adjusted by moving the fire sticks 
into any of these hole positions. You may want to set it up for charcoal. I think that would probably be about right for charcoal if I were setting it up. That's about in the middle of the stove uh, and then your grill plate would sit on top. You will need to hold on to it with something. Uh, I like to use the long handled pot gripper. Uh, this end of it works very well to just hold on to the grill plate while you're turning uh, your steak. Ooh, man, that's tender. It almost wants to pull apart already. The triangle torch is designed to use its wood vertically, so you need pieces of wood that are five and a half inches long. If they're longer than five and a half inches, they will start to block the airflow. So I would keep them between five inches and five and a half inches. And then you go ahead and just run those right down to the ground. Now if you have a saw, you can use sticks that are larger diameter and you'll get a longer burn time. But this is what I was talking about as far as the airflow. When you have the pot on here, this rectangular shape here on the edge is where all of your exhaust will come out. That needs to be clear so that the air can flow up through the fire, building speed as it goes, and then exhausting out the front, just like a Swedish fire torch. I really like using the triangle torch in higher elevations where you need a little bit of a faster fire to compensate for less oxygen. Find a spot that is sheltered from the wind if it's windy and you want to make sure that there is no combustible material anywhere near the stove. You want to always practice fire safety. Have fire safety be your number one priority. Go ahead and break up a bunch of sticks that are about the size of your hand like that. I want the chunkier stuff down at the bottom. By putting all of this wood horizontally down on the fire grate that will slow the airflow down just a little bit as well. But once you have a pretty good base of fairly tightly stacked wood put a bunch of this in on top. This will just help the fire get going. These small sticks have very little thermal mass so they heat up fast and they contribute to the fire a lot quicker than the bigger pieces. We do have a little breeze here. As long as you have heat, you may as well use it. Let's put the pot on. Okay, that did not take very long at all to get to a rapid boil. But now that we have kind of a good bed going, we can drop in some of these chunkier pieces. Maintaining your fire in the firebox freestyle is all about timing and temperature. Every piece of wood you put in has thermal mass, so it will cool down the core of your fire. You don't want to wait until your fire is almost going out before you put more wood in, because there might not be enough energy left in the fire that's existing to heat up the new fuel that you've just put in. And don't put too much fuel in at one time, or you will overwhelm your fire with this cold fuel and you can put it out. Once you have a well-established fire, you can start feeding fuel in from the side. Now it may help to stabilize your stove by putting a little pressure on your pot or holding your pan. As your sticks burn, gently feed them further in. Once again, remember to stabilize your pot or your pan before you start pushing your sticks further in. Sometimes when you're boiling water in a pot like this, 
creosote will form on the bottom of the pot and it will cause the pot to stick to your stove a little bit. So you don't want to pick your pot straight up or that can pick up your whole stove. You know, the stove is very lightweight. Uh, this one is made out of titanium so it's especially light. So what you want to do is you want to kind of pick up one corner of your pot and then pick up the other corner. So you're kind of holding your stove down with one corner and you're breaking loose the pot from the stove by lifting the other corner of your pot. To properly maintain your firebox tin and your firebox freestyle, I recommend a light coat of oil between uses. This is extra virgin olive oil non-stick cooking spray. I find this is just really convenient to just give a really light misting onto your firebox tin. And then wipe it down with a napkin or a paper towel. And you're basically wiping all that oil back off. You don't want your fire pan tin to be, you know, really oily. You just want to clean it up and you want to leave it with a very light coat of oil. You'll want to get a light coat of oil on the inside of it and on the outside. So once you have the inside finished, I just close it up. That way you can hold on to it. And I don't spray more on. I just use what's left on the paper towel or the napkin. And just run over the whole thing and make it look nice and pretty. Now every once in a while, you're going to grill something that has a lot of fat in it. Or perhaps cook hot dogs, which can be quite messy and you're going to need to use soap and water to get it clean. Dry it with a paper towel and then put it in the oven at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. When you get it out of the oven it will be completely dry and it will be ready to oil. That will give it a really nice finish and protect it from corrosion. You want to give the Firebox Freestyle a similar treatment. Now this is the titanium version so you don't need to oil it to prevent corrosion. Um, but it is a good idea to put a little bit of oil on it every once in a while. It helps the hinges function well and uh, just keeps, keeps things working nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove the pin between panel number one and panel number four. And then I'm just going to go ahead and open the whole thing up. Keep track of your, your leg, your pin. And then with it opened up, it's real easy to wipe it down. I'm going to go ahead and treat this as though it were stainless steel and just give it a light coat of oil with the spray and then wipe it down with a napkin or paper towel. The oil just helps pick up um, the soot. It helps uh, clean things just a little bit better. So you're oiling it and you're cleaning it at the same time. I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. And one thing that uh, may be helpful if your hinge pins, if your legs feel a little bit stiff or a little bit tight when you're putting them in and out, just pull them out one at a time and just put a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on them and wipe them down, clean them. You know, a little bit of uh, cleaning them and oiling them will make a world of difference in how they function. So you can see that one already goes in smoother than it was. See, that one just felt a little bit tight. What happens when you have a hot fire in there is that burns off all the oils that were ever on the, uh, the hinge pins. And so just getting a little bit of oil back on there uh, just helps them operate more smoothly. 
but I recommend pulling them out one at a time. That titanium sure is beautiful. If this were stainless steel, you would want to put a light coat of oil on it. And just maintain it with just a little bit of oil between uses. It'll just keep it looking nice and it will prevent corrosion. So once you have your fire grate, your stove, uh, maybe you'd want to wipe down your fire sticks, get them cleaned up, then you're ready to go ahead and package it back up. I like to put the fire sticks on both sides of this hinge. Then I put the fire grate on top. Once again, you can see this is in the orientation that I will put it in the stove. This is the long side and this is the long side. And so I just always keep it in that orientation just to make it easy. I get asked a lot, how do I clean up my pot after cooking over a wood fire? I just wipe it down with either paper towel or a napkin, and you just need to remove this loose soot. So if you just wipe the whole thing down one time around is usually enough. There's quite a bit of soot there in that spot. If I wipe that down with a paper towel or a napkin, and then you can see it, it doesn't come off, you know, there's kind of a glaze that's left behind, but all you really need to get off is the loose stuff. It's best to just embrace the black, wipe off the loose soot, clean off the stuff that is going to be messy, and when you get home you can go over it with soap and water and get a little bit more of it off, but I never try to get all the black off. I really do like the black. Uh, they say that it runs more efficiently and absorbs heat better when it's black. So I embrace the black. We wanted it to be easy to put your stove in, so we made the bag a little bit loose. The other reason we made the bag this particular size was because we wanted the ability for the bag to actually hold the whole entire case so you can slide your case into the bag like that as well. Let me show you how you can get creative with these locking fire sticks. So these are the fire sticks that have the little notch cut into them. So I'm going to set this up this direction. I'm going to use the locking fire stick right here and I'm going to snap it into its position. I'm going to use another fire stick here and one here on the end and then what I'm going to do is put the hexagon on this end and we'll just put the regular fire grate right here. I call this the keyhole position or the keyhole configuration or shape or you know whatever you want to call it but this way you can have kind of a maybe a boiling station going here uh, with a pot sitting here and then maybe you have uh, a grilling project going on over on this side. Doing stuff like this gets a little bit more tricky because you have to put the fire sticks in in a very particular order to make them work. 
So this is one of the locking fire sticks. So let's go ahead and lock it up right there. And then I run another locking fire stick across right here. And I could actually run this one from this side and run that right there until that locks in. And then that locks this into position. Uh, but then I would need a fire stick maybe going across here on an angle to hold to hold that fire grate up. And then let's put one here on this end. And let's see if we can find a we'll go ahead and use our two in one fire grate here and just the regular fire grate right there. So that's kind of fun.